good morning. Good morning, my brothers and my sisters. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about you, but I just think it is a privilege. I think it is an honor to be able to worship God. Amen. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, beloved, where would not only I be, but sometimes you need to ask yourself the question, where would you be if the Lord had not been there to sustain you, to, to guide you, to direct your path, to walk with you every step of the way? So to God be the glory for the great things that he continues to do. Once again, we welcome you to St. Paul African Methodist Episcopal Church in the great city of Montgomery, Alabama. Amen. So before we embark upon our worship experience this morning, I just have a few announcements that I would like to bring to your attention. First of all, I want to say there was a great Harvest Home meeting and worship celebration on yesterday. So thanks to all who attended, especially to all of the St. Paul officers who have uh, Episcopal uh, offices that were a part of that call on yesterday, I simply want to say thank you. Our COVID-19 task force had to be rescheduled from last Thursday due to a bishop's call meeting. So the COVID-19 task force will meet on this Thursday at 6.30 and the meeting information will be emailed out. Amen. Beloved, we will have our family and friends day uh, celebration. We're going to do it in the course of two days. Amen. On August the 26th, August the 26th, that's a Wednesday night at 7 o'clock p.m., we're going to have a family night revival. It's going to be a one-night family revival. We're going to do it via Zoom, and we're going to break it up into three, amen, worship experiences. We're going to have one for the youth, one for the brothers, and one for the sisters. Uh, our youth will be ministered to by Reverend Dr. Jamel Rogers. Amen. Our sisters are going to be ministered to by Reverend Dr. Patricia Outlaw. And our brothers will be hanging with Reverend Nathaniel Copeland. Amen. That's going to happen that Wednesday night. And on that Sunday morning, August the 30th at 1030, we're going to culminate with our family and friends celebration with presiding elder Samuel Smith. You will be receiving more information about this uh, via our Facebook as well as the members will be receiving a mailing and the people of God said amen. amen once again let's continue to believe God for those who are fighting amen uh, the good fight of faith as it relates to uh, COVID-19 and others who are impacted uh, with other uh, illnesses there is no secret what God can do what he's done for others he surely can do for you. On this coming Thursday, we will be delivering our senior meals. We will not have a mobile food pantry on this Thursday, but we will be still delivering our senior meals. Once again, if a need arises, amen, please contact the church. I almost forgot one more important announcement. I know our young people are going back to school on tomorrow, so beloved, we have not forgotten about you. So on August the 29th, that's a Saturday morning at 10 a.m., we're going to have a back-to-school parade. Amen. We're going to social distance. We're going to have a back-to-school parade and bless our young people with school supplies. And we're going to have a little cookout already prepared where as they drive by the car, we're just going to hand it to them. They need to know that we are in their corner and we are going to support and be there for them every step of the way. And the people of God shouted. Amen. And the people of God shouted. Amen. Have you come to worship? Have you come to praise God? Have you come to lay aside every weight that besets you and press your way into the presence of the living God? With that being said, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom
morning. Good morning. Called worship. We gather as God beloved children. However glad we are. However how disordered we are. We come together as people whom Jesus called into communities. So this become a place where all are welcome. We have come to give thanks to pray and sing and to be with others. Let us worship God.
Hallelujah. We bless your name, God. In time like these, in time, oh, like these, oh, in time. I'm growing old I'm growing old and feeble Time, Sister Tabitha, in times like these. Oh, in time, in time. Oh, like these. Oh, yes, Lord, in times oh, like these. Oh, 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 in in time. times. In times like these, oh, in times, oh, like these, Ooh, don't you know that I need, I need the Lord to help. Shall we bow? Shall we pray? My brothers and my sisters, indeed in times like these, in times of uncertainty, in times when we want to pour new wine into old wineskins, in times when God is saying, behold, I am doing a new thing. In times when God is asking us to persevere in our faith just a little while longer. It's in these times that we need to cry out to the Lord. Lay aside your pride and uh, cry out to the Lord. And say, Lord, I need you to help me. But Lord, before I lay any petition before the foot of the cross, God, I have to take time to exalt and magnify your holy name. Oh, what a mighty God that you are. God, is the truth be told that you are our rock <laughs> in a weary land. That God, that you continue to provide shelter even in spite of the storm. That if the truth be told, God, we want to say thank you. Uh, because even when it should look like we should go without, uh, you continue to rain down manna from heaven. Uh, you continue to make a way out of nowhere, God. Uh, even when doctors have given up on us, uh, 
in you, Father God, is yes and amen. So, God, we magnify and exalt your name. For indeed, God, you're worthy. But, God, I want to pray especially on this day. For all of those children and all of those teachers and all of the administrators and all of the parents, Father God, those who have to wrestle with difficult decisions right now, God, as our children embark upon a new school year. God, we're calling upon your name because if the truth be told, God, we have no other plan, no other person to lead but you, Lord. So first of all, God, I lift up the school administrators unto you right now, God. The word of God says that if they lack wisdom that they need to ask, God. So right now, God, I don't care how many letters they have behind their name. I pray right now, God, that they will seek you, God, but God, that they will ask for wisdom, God. Give them insight to make decisions, God, uh, that's going to impact the, the future of our children. So, God, I'm asking you to get in the mix of politics right now, Father God. Uh, politics that not only are impacting, uh, Father God, their ability to learn, but impacting uh, their very lives, Father God. Uh, but your Holy Spirit uh, can go where no man can go. Uh, start hovering right now, God, uh, in the name of Jesus. God, I come lifting the teachers unto you right now, God. Lord, I'm asking you to give them a fresh wind, a fresh ruah, God, to energize them right now, God, that they will come with a new perspective and a new outlook, that they will lay aside preconceived notion that they've had about children, but they will look at them with fresh eyes as they embark upon a new school year. Yes, God, I pray for their patience. But I also pray for resources to be made available to them, Father God. If the truth be told, God, teachers have to take money out of their salary to just make up the slack, Father God. But right now, God, you are Jehovah Jireh. You provide for everything that they need. In those instances, Father God, where politics are creeping in and they holding back kids' tablets at the airport and even going through customs, Father God. God, you get in the midst of that and you shake it up right now in the name of Jesus. Because every resource that every child needs right now, we release it in the heavenly realm. In the name of Jesus. And I know I'm taking my time with this prayer this morning, but it's in my spirit to do so. So, Lord, I pray for the administrators. I pray for the teachers. But, God, I come lifting up our children, our little boys, and our little girls. Because if the truth be told, children are a gift from God. So God, I'm praying that our children will refocus right now. If the truth be told, some of our babies have been on vacation since March, Father God. So I'm asking you right now to refocus them, God. To open up their minds. To give them a thirst for learning, Father God. Stir up creativity, Father God. Stir up gifts that are lying dormant, Father God. Allow these children to realize that they are the head and not the tail. They are above and not beneath and with the Lord on their side that they can do all things through Christ that the future is bright that they can establish their plans in you Lord and they shall succeed so even when the enemy tries to come up against him, uh, no matter what that enemy looks like, uh, even if it's premature sex, experiencing with drugs or being bullied, God has you to raise up a staff.
and dirt that the enemy cannot penetrate. Cover them with your blood. Even God from COVID-19 and other infectious diseases because there's still power in the blood of the Lamb. But God, I come right now praying for parents. Praying for grandparents who have to step in, Father God. Praying for guardians, Father God, who so unselfishly give of themselves, Lord, to girls and boys who don't have direction, who don't have mentorship, Father God. I'm praying for them, God, that even in this season, that they would not get weary in well-doing, that they would stay the course that they will realize that they are the first mentor, uh, that they are the first idol, uh, that they are the first example uh, in which the young people look upon, Father God. But God, I know we need you. Whether the kids are going to go in the class or whether they're learning virtually, whatever it is, God, you declare that you're omnipresent. So allow your presence to be felt. And is there anything in me, God, that prevent this prayer from reaching you, God? I ask you to remove it right now in the name of Jesus. Because in times like these, we need you, Lord. We need your help. We need your faith. We need your wisdom. We need your provision. It's in Jesus' name that I do pray. And the people of God said amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Before the ministry of music, ministers, so grateful that I have a staff that loves the Lord and loves St. Paul and even love their pastor. If the truth be told, I don't have to give an explanation, but I haven't had a break since the Christmas holidays. And it was starting to be a toll upon me. But I know how to listen to the Lord. And listen to him and not let your body start talking to you, amen. But I'm so blessed that we have Reverend Pamela Higgins to stand in the gap this morning. She is an ordained itinerant elder in the African Methodist Episcopal Church. She is also a judge. Amen. She's also a lawyer, amen. She's also a child of God. One who knows the power of prayer. One who knows the power of calling on the name of the Lord. One who knows how to persevere in spite of opposition. One who knows how to run on to trust the Lord and see what the end is going to be. But how many of you all know that she cannot preach until the real preacher manifests? And for those who know the power of prayer, I ask you to stand in the gap and pray for Reverend Higgins right now. Ask you to reach out your right hand and say, Reverend Higgins, 
we're praying for you. Reverend Higgins, we're praying with you. Reverend Higgins, let the Lord use you. In Jesus' name, amen. After the ministry of music, the next voice that you will hear will be of Reverend Pamela Higgins. Amen. Why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus sees my portion, friend is he for his eye is on the sparrow and I know he watches me he is on the sparrow and I
over me if the God we serve can take care of the little birds how much more will he do for you and me how much more good morning I don't take uh, standing behind this sacred desk for granted I Thank God for even considering me worthy enough to use me as his servant and as his voice. I just thank him for that. And I still marvel at it. Um, and I thank my pastor for uh, standing behind me and pushing and encouraging me. Uh, I just appreciate her generous spirit. And if you would, for a few moments, bow your heads with me. Gracious Father, I'm standing in the need of prayer. God, you know what it took to get here. God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, let it be acceptable to you. Speak through me, God. I am a yielded vessel, Lord. And God, open eyes, spiritual eyes. Open spiritual ears, God, so they may hear what thus says the Lord. Not Pam, but, but thus saith the Lord. And God, whatever you do and however you move, in this place, you'll get the glory. It's in the matchless name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Our text for today will be Psalm 138. We'll talk about the entire psalm, but I would uh, just draw your attention to verses 1 through 3 and verses 7 through eight, seven and eight, verses one through three. I give you thanks, O Lord, and I'm reading from the English Standard Version. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and for your faithfulness. For you have exalted above all things your name and your word. On the day I called, you answered me. My strength of soul increased. And let me read verse 3 again. On the day I called, you answered me. My strength of soul, you increased. Verse 7, though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. 
Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. A few weeks ago, while preparing a meditation for an organizational meeting, I came across the following story, and the author of the story is unknown, and I quote, one day a professor entered his classroom and he asked his students to prepare for a surprise test. They all waited anxiously at their desks for the exam to begin, and the professor handed out the exams with the text facing down as usual. Once he has handed them all out, he asked the class to turn over the papers. To everyone's surprise, there were no questions, just a black dot in the center of the sheet of paper. Just a black dot in the center of the sheet of paper. Now the professor, seeing the expression on everyone's faces, told them this, I want you to write about what you see there. The students, confused, got started on the inexplicable task. At the end of the class, the professor took the papers and started reading each one of them aloud in front of all the students. All of them, with no exception, defined the black dot, trying to explain its position in the center of the sheet of paper. All of them, with no exception, defined the black dot. And after all the papers had been read, the classroom silent. And the professor began to explain, I'm not going to grade uh, you, I'm not going to grade you on this. I just wanted to give you something to think about. No one wrote about the white part of the paper. Everyone focused on the black dot. And the same happens in our lives. Close quote. Yes, perhaps that professor was right because I believe, and understandably so, for well over five months now, we all have, and I dare say without exception, we've all been focused on the black dot in our lives. COVID-19, the coronavirus. And in truth, this black dot has impacted every area of our lives. It has impacted us spiritually. Our worship experience is different. We can no longer gather in person for corporate worship, but we're having to worship via social media platforms, for which I'm grateful. But for many of us, the sense of community and family may be gone because of this. It has impacted us socially. Vacations, conferences, and other travel plans have been canceled. And social distancing is the order of the day. Face-to-face -face interaction is risky. And despite the wealth of platforms available by which we can communicate, we have Zoom, Teams, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, FaceTime, texting, and yes, the telephone. People are still lonely and feeling isolated. It has impacted us mentally. And it's also impacted us physically. That is our health. Either we have or a family member has contracted this virus. And we've had to watch its ugly effects on their bodies. And in some cases, we've had to watch them die. It has also impacted us professionally in our jobs. So many of us have lost our jobs which in and of itself creates another host of issues. And according to the Labor Department, approximately 1.19 million people filed a new request for unemployment claims last week. And this wasn't new, these were new claims. And this number was added to the 16 point 11 million people with continuing unemployment claims. And if we're fortunate enough to still have a job, 
We've had to adapt to workplace policy and procedures for social distancing and wearing PPE, personal protective equipment. It appears that the world as we knew it does not exist anymore. Or it has just been turned upside down. And any plans we've made for our lives have been interrupted. And so yes, if we were in that classroom and given that exam today, perhaps we too would fill our papers with words about the black dot. But I believe, I believe that there is so much more in our lives to write about. So instead of writing about the black dot, what if you simply fill the page with, God, I thank you. For a few minutes this morning, I just want to remind you and challenge you to tell God, thank you. Tell God, thank you. Tell God, thank you. As we look at our text, theologians disagree to the extent as to the exact background and situation that occurred at the writing of this psalm. But what they do agree on is that when David wrote it, he had come through some kind of trouble. And so he penned this psalm of thanksgiving. And as pastor said last Sunday, David was somebody who knew about trouble. Yes, David, who according to most theologians was under the age of 16 when he was anointed as king of Israel in 1 Samuel 16, 12. But he did not assume this position until he was 30 years of age. And his ascent to the throne was marked by countless near-death experiences at the hand of King Saul. And after he became king, he faced threats from other nations and even his own son. In those difficult times, whether they were caused by outside forces or they were due to his own sins, he didn't dwell on the enemy. He didn't dwell on the threat. He didn't dwell on the situation. He turned his heart and his attention to God. He was quick to turn his focus to God because his heart was fully and absolutely devoted to God. He knew, as the songwriter said, to keep his mind stayed on the Lord. He didn't write about the black dots in his life, but he filled the pages of, of his life with thanksgiving and praise for God. In other words, when God came through for him, not if, but when God came through for him, he knew how to tell God, thank you. So as you look at the page, page of your life this morning, the pages of your life this morning, tell God, thank you. Tell God, thank you for responding to you. In verse one, the psalmist declares that he will give thanks to God. He will praise him. Some translations say, I will praise you. Offer up thanksgiving to God. In other words, he will tell God, thank you. And thank his name because of his steadfast love and his faithfulness. Now, I don't want you to miss this. Before David focuses on what God has done for him, he tells God, thank you for just being God. Thank you because of who you are. And who is God? According to Exodus 34, 6 through 7, when God spoke to Moses, he said the Lord passed before him and proclaimed, the Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving in and transgressions and sin. That's who God is. 
And he, just, and he doesn't offer God just a half-hearted thank you like we do sometimes. Or offer it as, as an afterthought. But he tells God thank you with everything he has. And you, likewise, we shouldn't offer lip service to God. But we should say thank you for being who you are with all of our heart. He thanks and praises God with all of his heart, all of his mind, all of his soul, and all of his strength. Just as we have been commanded to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, and with all of our soul, and with all of our mind, and with all of your strength. I've heard it said that love is as love does. Yeah. 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 And then, and then he tells God, thank you for responding to me. In verse 3 he says, on the day I called, you answered me. My strength of soul increase. Now the psalmist was perhaps weak at this point. It may not have just been physical. It could have been emotional. Could have been mental. Or it could have been spiritual. But he declares that at the moment he called out to God, God answered him. No delay. Immediately. And how does he know that God answered him? Because he strengthened him. Now this isn't the kind of strength that it takes to lift a certain number of pounds. No, no, this, is, this isn't physical. This is a spiritual strength. It's that uh, you don't look like what you've been through kind of strength. It's that you don't look like what you're still going through kind of strength. It's that all you see is my glory, but you don't know my story kind of strength. It's the strength that comes through the power of the Holy Spirit. It's the strength that Paul prayed for in Ephesians in, in chapter 3, verses 14 through 16. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being. That's the kind of strength God provides for me when we call and he answers. That's the kind of strength God provides. And here's the truth. God has answered each of us when we've called out to him. Amen. You know the time when your bills were due and you had just enough money to pay your bills. But all of a sudden the car decided it needed your attention and some of your money too. And you wondered where would the money come from? And a check came in the mail. Or perhaps you found some money in the zipper part of that purse you put in your closet a year ago. Or how when you were feeling lonely and at just the right time, your phone rang. Or when you didn't know if you could handle the pain and the heartache of whatever and you made it to the other side of through. Or when you were under so much pressure, deadlines on the job, home issues, and you literally thought you were going to have a breakdown. And he kept you. You made it through. You didn't fail the test. You didn't lose your job. You didn't lose anything. And in some instances, you got back more than you ever expected. He kept you. He preserved you. He answered you when, he called, when you called out to him. He came to see about you. David knew God intimately. And he knew what God had done for him and how he had answered when he called in every part of his struggle. God had responded with exactly what he needed. And that's why he could tell God thank you with every fiber of his being. And the same is true for us. In every part of my struggle and in every part of your struggle, God has responded with exactly what we needed. May not have been what we wanted, but he responded with what we needed. And he will continue to respond with exactly what we need. So if God has ever answered you when you called out to him, then with every fiber of your being, with your whole heart, tell God, Thank you. Tell God thank you for keeping you. 
In verse 7, he says, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the wrath of the enemies, and your right hand delivers me. Now here the psalmist finds himself in the middle of trouble. It seems as though his enemies have him surrounded. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Perhaps to him it felt like everywhere he, was tur he turned, there was trouble. No peace, no safety, strife, dissension, fighting, tension, stress, people not living up to their expectations, and he was not living up to theirs. But he declares that the Lord will protect him. And how will the Lord protect him? By moving and acting against his enemies. So God protects the psalmist. He keeps him alive. He won't let him die at the hands of the enemy. And we too often find ourselves walking in the middle of troubles. Trouble in your home, broken relationships, family issues, job issues, church hurts, medical problems. If not your problems, then they're, they're the problems of a family member or someone you're really close to. Financial issues. And then along comes COVID-19. Trouble on the left, trouble on the right. Trouble in front and trouble behind. No peace at home. No peace on the job. No peace at church. And no peace on social media. Just trouble. It's what the psalmist declared in Psalm 3. But you, Lord, are a shield around me. And in Psalm 121, 15, the Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. And it's also what Paul discussed in 2 Thessalonians 3 and 3. But the Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. Just like the psalmist said, we can tell God thank you and offer our praise because even when it seems like we are walking in the midst of trouble, even when it seems like we're being consumed by our sorrows, even when it seems like we're surrounded by heartache, even when it seems we're drowning in need, God will preserve our lives. He will protect us. He will save us. He's not going to allow us to be taken out by whatever we're experiencing right now. Because we know that when we called on him before, he answered us. So go ahead. Go ahead and tell God thank you. Tell him thank you for what he's yet to do. In verse 6, he, he declares that the Lord will fulfill his purpose for you. Your steadfast love, O oh Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. That's verse 8. Here he declares his faith in the Lord. And whatever God plans are for his life, they'll be worked out. They'll be fulfilled. Scripture declares in Job 42, 2, that God can do all things. No purpose of his can be thwarted. In other words, God can do anything, and nobody can stop him. We have to yield our lives to, the, to God so that he can work out his perfect will and his perfect plan for our lives. Our enemies, our trials, our problems, our issues, and COVID-19 may have interrupted, they may have disturbed, or they may have completely annihilated our plans for our lives. But they have not altered God's plans. They've not altered God's purposes for our lives. You see, they just don't have that kind of power. They don't have that kind of power. The enemy does not have that kind of power. And, and neither have they taken away the power and the truthfulness of the word of God. They have not diminished God's power. They've not diminished God's authority. They've not diminished his mercy. God is still God. And he is still in control. He still reigns supreme. God is still present in our lives. And he is still actively working in our lives. We can be assured of this because of God's love. God's love is a, 
a steadfast love. It's unmovable. It doesn't sway with the wind. It's not steady. It's steady. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not conditional. It's unconditional. It doesn't depend on how you act and how I act. It doesn't depend on what I do and what you do or what I say and you say. It's dependable, reliable, and it's not taken away. He doesn't take it away because he can. It's a love that according to Psalm 103.10 that does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. His love will always be there. He will never leave your side. It's a love that endures forever. And to paraphrase James Nelson, forever is a long time. And that's how long God will love you, forever. And because of this enduring love, the, the psalmist knows and we keep, too can know that God will protect us. God will preserve our lives and God will deliver us. I believe. I believe, I truly and honestly believe that none of our experiences in life, the good, the bad, and the ugly are wasted. We are all reminded in Romans 8, 28, that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. God will use our circumstances, our issues, our troubles. He'll use them for his glory. Whatever your story is, whatever my story is, this battle, this hurt, this hardship is not the end of the story. COVID-19 is not the end of the story. Philippians 1, 6, us tell, 6 tells us that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. And so how do I know that whatever we're facing right now is not the end of our story? How do I know it's not the end of our story? I know this because my Bible, my Bible tells me in John 3, 16 that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Eternal life. You see, that's the real end of the story for those who have placed their trust in Jesus Christ. And that truly is reason enough to tell God, thank you. Tell God, thank you. Tell God, thank you. We praise God for the preached word. Come on, let us celebrate the word. Come on, come on, let us celebrate the preached word that reminded us, amen, that we need to tell the Lord, thank you, amen. And I'm so grateful, amen, that my sister labored before the Lord, amen, and to the Lord spoke to her because we needed to hear that word, amen. To stop focusing on the dot, that one dot that's overshadowing everything that the Lord has done for you. Why don't you tell the Lord, thank you, amen. Even if it's for waking you up this morning. And beloved, perhaps there's one under the sound of my voice. I'm so grateful that she reminded us, that Reverend Higgins reminded us that the Lord loves us, that the Lord cares for us. Amen. And so no matter what is going on with you right now, you are not alone. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's a promise that you can stand on, that he will never leave you, he will never forsake you. But you need to invite the Lord into your heart. And if you would like to receive the gift of salvation, beloved, pray with me right now. Say, Lord, come into my heart. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Lord, I thank you for dying on the cross so that, Lord, I can have 
have eternal life with you. You died on the cross to pay my sin debt, a debt that I could never repay. But God, I also thank you that on the third day that you rose with all power and I receive that Holy Ghost power right now. Lord, help me to live the rest of my days for you, oh Lord. Lord, I thank you for the precious gift of salvation. It's in Jesus' name that I do pray. And if Sister Tabitha don't mind flowing with me, because as Sister, and I call her sister because she is my sister in Christ, but as Reverend Pamela Higgins was preaching and reminding us to tell the Lord, thank you. You know, I'm still an old school kind of girl. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Yes. <laughs> oh, we can take a minute. Come on. Yeah, yeah. That's what came to my spirit. Hey, come on. Tragedies are commonplace. All kinds of diseases. People are slipping away. Economies down. People can't get enough pay. But as for me, all I can say is thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. <laughs> Come on. Hey. People are jobs for living in the street. The drug habits, some say they just can't kick. Muggers and robbers, no place seem to be safe. But you've been my protection every step of the way. I want to say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Come on, say I keep looking at you. into this ministry. So, beloved, I invite you to join us in our giving verse. It is printed on the screen. Beloved, let us read. 
God supplies seed to the planter. He supplies bread for food. God will also supply and increase the amount of your seed. He will increase the results of your good works. You will be made rich in every way. Then you can always give freely. We will take your many gifts to the people who need them, and they will give thanks to God. Beloved, we invite you to sow a seed into St. Paul AME Church. Amen. You can mail it to the church. Amen. 706 East Patton Avenue, Montgomery, Alabama, 36111. Or we have a locked mailbox outside of the church. You can also give via Cash App, via PayPal, or give Lafay. But give and it shall be given back to you. Good measure. Shaken down. Shaken down. Pressed together. Cup running over. Amen. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Hallelujah. We will give in the sanctuary first and we invite you to give at this time. things come of thee, O Lord. All things come of thee, O Lord. And of thine own. And of thine own. And we give up thee. Amen. 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 Beloved, thank you so much for your sacrificial giving. And we do petition God for seeds that are sown, that especially God in this season that you will sow back to Psalm tenfold, that you will give to others a hundredfold. God, some are in need of a thousandfold. God, wow and just multiply according to your infinite wisdom. But however you bless us, God, we're going to give you all the glory and all the praise. It's in Jesus' name, and the people of God that receives it shouted, amen. amen. Come on, let us thank the Lord one more time for Reverend Higgins, amen, reminding us to thank the Lord and stop focusing on the dot, amen. Praise God for our media team, our stewardess on duty, amen, as well as our ministry of music. God keeps on keeping on, and God keeps on blessing, amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Oh, praise Him, praise Him. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Oh, praise Him, praise Him. God, thank you. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you today, tomorrow, and for days to come. And all God's people said, Amen. 